All right, we should be live on Facebook now and recording. So thanks to everyone who has joined so far. Um, we are going to start our webinar on organizing for peace in your local communities in about a couple minutes. We're gonna wait for some other folks to join us. Um, and yeah, we're, we're looking forward to talking with folks today. Okay, so I think pretty much ready to get started. It's 5.30. Um, and so just wanted to make sure everyone, we respect everyone's time. Um, so thanks for everyone for joining us on our webinar today. Um, we are going to be talking about how to organize for peace in your local community. Um, my name is Carly Town. Uh, I'm a national organizer with Code Pink Stay Best from the War Machine campaign. Um, Really excited to welcome everyone to our Organizing for Peace webinar, which is put on in conjunction with Oregon Physicians for Responsibility and the Iranian American Friendship Council. So thank you so much. Um, so, uh, you know, today we're gonna be talking about how we can build on the momentum from um, the International Day of Action for Peace with Iran that Code Pink and our coalition partners put on on January 25th. Um, on January 25th, we had over 200 events uh, based in over 15 countries around the world, uh, where people joined us from all different kinds of movements. Um, of course, the anti-war movement, but also the environmental movement, the feminist movement, uh, the student movement, the labor movement. Um, so we really want to build on the momentum from our January 25th action um, put on to advocate for peace with Iran uh, by organizing in our local communities. Uh, because of course, we know that even though the Trump administration has said that tensions with Iran are um, simmering and, and their things are not as tense anymore, we know that that's not true because the Trump administration, um, after saying that, increased economic sanctions on um, unilateral economic sanctions on Iran. And um, also, this latest action um, that spurred the International Day of Action for Peace with Iran. Uh, which was the uh, assassination of General Soleimani was just the latest in years long maximum pressure campaign that the Trump administration um, has been has been putting on the Iran on Iran. So, um, you know, we we know that in order to continue to advocate for peace with Iran, we have to educate people in our local communities and also organize in our local communities. Um, so, you know, Today, we're gonna to be talking about how we can actually provide people with the tools and resources to not only pass Peace with Iran City Council resolutions in their local communities, but also um, how to host congressional town halls with their elected officials to really start to develop in their local towns, in your local cities, um, a relationship and a dialogue with the uh, local officials and representatives in your communities who actually make these really important decisions about um, war and peace. So in order to do that, um, I wanted to introduce our speakers who will be walking us through these two important case studies about how to organize in our local communities. So first we have Kelly Campbell, who will discuss the steps necessary to pass a city council resolution in your local community. Um, Kelly brings more than 20 years of experience in peace, justice, and environmental health organizing to her role as the executive director of Oregon's uh, Physicians for Social Responsibility. Before joining Oregon's Physici Physician for Social Responsibility, uh, she served as the uh, Portland Area Peace Program Director for the American Friends Service Committee and was a founding co-director of Se September 11th uh, Families for Peaceful Tomorrows, an organization that has been nominated three times for the Nobel Peace Prize. Uh, Kelly served on the steering committee of the National Coalition United for Peace and Justice and worked uh, as the communications director for Pesticide Action Network North America and as campaign coordinator for Californians for Pesticide Reform. 
She's a, the recipient of the 2019 Visionary Leaders Award from National Physicians for Social Responsibility. So really excited to have Kelly on with us. Again, she's gonna be walking us through how to pass a city council resolution in your local community. Um, then we're gonna hear from um, Dr. Gudars Egdazari, who will walk us through how to co host uh, congressional town halls in our own communities. Uh, so Gudars is a political analyst, writer, radio producer, human rights activist and peace activist by choice um, and an engineer and educator by profession. Uh, he's a member of the Columbia University's Gulf 2000, a think tank with a focus on the Persian Gulf under supervision of Professor Gary Sick. Uh, Gudars is a founder and one of the directors of the American Iranian Friendship Council in Oregon. His writings are published in the Oregonian, Asian Reporter, Peace Worker, Portland Alliance, um, Iranian.com, Iran, um, Iranian.com, sorry, and numerous other Persian online magazines. Uh, he resides in Portland, Oregon. So after we hear from both Kelly and Gudars, who obviously have um, a wealth of experience under their belts, uh, we're gonna break for a Q&A about both presentations, both the presentation about how to pass your city council resolution and how to organize congressional town halls in your local community. We'll break for a Q&A where folks will have the opportunity to talk with um, both Kelly and Gudars. And also, so while the, they're giving their presentations, make sure you write down any questions you have um, and we'll be excited to talk with you about them then. So without further ado, I'm gonna pass it over to Kelly to start us off. Uh, so Kelly, welcome. Great, thanks Carly, and thanks everyone for being here. Um, I am going to attempt to share my screen with you so we can look at some slides um, while I give this presentation. Um, so as Carly mentioned, I'm gonna talk about how to pass a city council resolution for diplomacy with Iran. This is something that we partnered with American Iranian Friendship Council and about 20 other organizations who supported it uh, to pass in Portland last November. So we got a little jump start, unfortunately, on um, the escalating tensions that have happened since then. Uh, but I think that our experience can be instructive for others who are looking at passing a city council resolution for diplomacy with Iran. So this is gonna be a little bit of a 101 how to do that and some lessons learned from our experience, and I'm looking forward to the Q&A and maybe some discussion with others who may have um, other experiences with city council resolutions and other ideas that they can add to the mix. So, um, let's see, there. Um, so, the, uh, the elements of the campaign. Um, number one, you're going to draft a resolution. Number two, you're going to build your coalition. Number three, you're going to secure city council support. Number four, you're gonna plan your hearing. And five is the fun one, victory, hooray, you passed your resolution. Um, these really don't really go in order though. In fact, um, number one through three, you kind of need to do simultaneously, um, depending on your situation. You're gonna need to start working on building that coalition as you're drafting the resolution, as you're talking to city council. Um, and that'll become clear as we go through these three different elements. Um, so drafting your resolution, First of all, you want to learn how city council resolutions are written in your city. Um, you should be able to find a template or you should be able to find examples on your city's website or by talking to a city clerk or a city council member. Generally, they have a whereas section, which is where you put in um, all of the information about the issues that you're dealing with and then a resolved section, which is important because that's where you're seeing what the city's actually going to do. So if you look at, at ours and we'll send that example as well as the, the code pink um, template out, you know, we actually have the city taking positions saying we support certain federal legislation, um, as well as directing that the resolution should be shared with Oregon's congressional delegation and with other federal leaders. Um, in ours, we actually also are supporting a developing sister city project um, that some folks are working on here. So that's also in our resolve section. So you want to think about um, what are all the pieces that you want to emphasize? Um, what are the concerns of your local community? Are you in touch with your local Iranian American community? What are their concerns? Um, what are the concerns of veterans? How can this be intersectional? How can you link this back to issues going on in your city? Can you talk about the cost of war? Um, you talk about all the money that you would potentially be spent on a war and how that um, would impact your city. 
talk about the sanctions, the travel ban, uh, the JCPOA. So those are just examples of things that you'll want to include or think about including in your resolution. Um, and finally, you want to workshop that resolution with the partners that you want to support it. So that's really key. You're going to get a stronger resolution. You're going to get more buy-in. You're going to get more organizations excited about participating if they have an opportunity to weigh in on what goes into the resolution itself. So that leads us to building your coalition. Um, so you need to think about what are the organizations and individuals that you want to reach out to. Do you have relationships in the Iranian American community? Um, and understand that some of those folks may be really scared right now and not feel comfortable um, speaking out publicly, but perhaps you know, they want to help write the resolution. Perhaps they want to um, submit written testimony and perhaps they do want to testify. Uh, but making sure you're reaching out to that community and building those relationships for the, for the long term. Uh, you may also think about Iraqi, uh, the Iraqi community or the Afghan community. Are there other war refugees in your community who can talk about what war does to people um, and that they could be involved in this? Certainly veterans, uh, Veterans for Peace, of course, was a huge partner for us. Here comes my cat. She wants to be part of this, um, maybe later. So uh, you know, uh, getting the veterans voice, faith-based groups, students, uh, immigrant rights groups, uh, we found a lot of support from environmental justice organizations because we had already built relationships with those groups on other issues. And so because we had those authentic and ongoing relationships and trust, and because of their understanding of intersectional work, some of those groups signed on um, to this resolution. So you wanna think about what are you asking organizations to do? Um, are you asking them to help with turnout? Are you asking them to provide a speaker? Are you asking them to do social media, um, to endorse the resolution, making sure that when you're reaching out to partners, you're clear about what your needs are and, and you're understanding what they're able to do to help you out. Um, and finally, give yourself enough time um, to do this work with coalitions. So part of what we found when we did this resolution against war with Iran, we did it in conjunction with a resolution supporting uh, the nuclear ban treaty. And we'd already been working on that statewide and had passed a state resolution around that. And so a lot of the groups who endorsed the state one were ready to jump on board with the city one, no problem. Um, some of those groups though had processes they needed to go through in order to get a decision to support uh, the diplomacy with Iran resolution. And so some of them were interested, but we, it didn't have time. So the more time that you can give yourself, I mean, understanding we wanna do this all now, right? But you also wanna be building those relationships, making sure groups have enough time um, to be able to make a decision and to understand you know, how, how would a potential war with Iran uh, impact um, the, the stuff that they're working on already. Um, so I think that's really important when you're building for the long haul is to be having those conversations with folks. Um, so here you can see uh, the organizations that did officially endorse our work um, on this resolution. And um, you'll see some kind of obvious ones there like Code Pink um, and other peace groups, uh, as well as some faith-based groups, Veterans for Peace, as I mentioned, but you also see the environmental community, the Sierra Club, uh, 350 PDX, OPAL, which is one of our um, prominent environmental justice groups here, as well as Unite Oregon and Immigrant Rights Group. So finding ways to build those bridges and um, bring in other voices, I, I think was really important for this and will be important for our organizing going forward. Uh, another thing to think about is gathering individual petition signatures. We gathered signatures uh, from about August until November when this passed. And so we could do that online, we could do that at events. And then those names were submitted as part of our testimony to city council. It also gave us people's contact info so we could reach out to them and say, hey, the hearing's coming up. Can you show up? Can you bring your friends? Do you want to testify? So uh, it's another good way to, to build your coalition is to get individuals, give them a, an opportunity to weigh in. So the third prong of this is securing support from city council. So first of all, you wanna learn how city council resolutions work in your city. Um, you know, does it have to come from the mayor? Can it come from any city council person? Is it called a resolution? Is it called something like, our state ones were called memorials. So when we, again, when we did that work, it was just different language. Um, understanding how they're formatted. The more that you know about how these things work, um, the 
the more you're going to look like you know what you're talking about when you're going to talk to city council members and the, and the city will help you to format it so that it officially fits their their um their formatting for these because they're all slightly different but again the more that you understand you know how these resolutions get passed in your city the better uh, i would also suggest researching what previous anti-war or iran related resolutions your city might have passed uh, Portland actually passed a similar resolution to this in 2007 that Gudars and others helped um, pass. So that's referenced in ours. Um, your city may be a nuclear free zone from the 80s. You might have passed a no war with Iraq resolution. Um, so go back and do that research because it'll help you to see, you know, A, how some of those looked. B, do you want to include a reference to that in your current city council resolution? and see maybe there are city council members who were involved with that who are still there and you're going to um, you know want to reach out to them because you know that um, how they voted on it the first time so um, then you're going to want to set up meetings with your city council members and or their staff to talk to them about the idea of this resolution and um, you when you set those up you want to bring in if you have trusted coalition members that maybe have good relationships with city council members, uh, bring them to the meeting. This is really kind of a fact-finding meeting to see what do they think about this idea? Do they have concerns that we need to address? Do they have ideas about how to approach it? Um, what you're looking for here is also finding your champion. You wanna find a city council member who is willing to be the lead on this. Um, and that person is gonna become really important as you'll see. Uh, so once you have secured your city council member to take the lead, then um, you can confer with them about how to approach the other city council members. Uh, they may say, as, as our city council person did, is, hey, you already talked to them, don't worry about it, I'll take it from here, make sure we have the votes, or they may help you strategize behind the scenes about what they know about you know, people's particular concerns and the best approaches to the rest of the members. Um, and then finally, you're going to set the date for your hearing. So again, hopefully your champion is helping you figure out what's a good date in terms of what else city council is dealing with. Um, and you're gonna um, want to see like, could you, do they have evening meetings? That might be a better time for you to be able to get the community to come out. Do you want to do it around an anniversary like the anniversary of the war in Iraq in, in mid-March? You know, would it make sense to do it then? Um, making sure that it fits with city council priorities and being respectful because you know, this is a very important issue. They're dealing with a lot of other important issues all the time and you wanna build those relationships for the long haul. So, um, you know, being assertive about, hey, we wanna get this thing passed, but also being respectful of their time and figuring out where this will fit into city council's um, agenda. So here is a picture of our champion, um, Commissioner Amanda Fritz. So she was really excited about this. She helped edit the resolution she communicated with other city council members to get their support for the resolution. She helped determine when to schedule it. And she gave a, a nice verbal introduction uh, at the city council meeting to explain why this was so important. And that really helped um, to set the stage for the hearing itself. So that brings us to the hearing. Um, you're gonna wanna find out, can you have invited testimony? Um, hopefully you can. Uh, learning about how testimony works. Is there a public sign up period? How does that work? So if you haven't been to city council meetings before, I suggest you go to some city council meetings, learn about um, and respect the time limits that they're gonna give you for your speakers. Um, check out what the layout's like, check out the format. Um, it just makes sense to know kind of what you're walking into there and that'll help you strategize about what it should look like on that day. So if possible, you wanna set the stage for your hearing by having one person give an overview of, of what the resolution is, what it does and why it's so important. And then to have others give invited testimony to speak from different perspectives, um, making sure that they're making your key points, trying to make sure that people aren't too repetitive, um, ensuring, and, and when we did worked on this Iran one as well as the nuclear weapons one on the same day, it was important to us um, that the communities most impacted were the main spokespeople. And uh, I think that that was really important. And sometimes, especially older white peace activists, everybody wants to talk. Maybe we don't all have to talk. Maybe there are other people who have stories to tell that are gonna be more impactful. Um, so I would just challenge those of us who've been around for a while doing this work that sometimes it's better to have new folks up there. Um, sometimes 
and it's definitely better to have the most impacted communities be able to speak for themselves. We actually um, did have that happen in ours and we had a city council member as she gave her vote say that the testimony that she heard this day was gonna echo in her mind forever. So that was pretty powerful. And that's because we had people um, telling authentic stories from their personal point of view. Um, think about visuals. Can you have signs or banners in your city council chambers? We weren't allowed to, so we did not have that. Uh, we did have people all wear blue. You can't really see that in this photo that well, but kind of worked. Um, we had buttons, you could have stickers. Think about any other creative visuals so that as city council members are sitting there looking out at the people in the audience, they can see these people are with you. Maybe you all wear pink if you're code pink. Um, so you're gonna wanna pack that hearing room. You wanna get as many people out as you can. You're gonna contact your petition set signers. You're gonna contact uh, your coalition members. You're gonna use social media and try to get as many folks out there to really show that there's community support for this. And finally, you're going to think about what a media strategy would be. So um, a news advisory before the hearing, you might want to do a press conference. We didn't do that, but you can do a press conference or rally. Um, you want to have a news release ready to go when you win so that all you have to do is push the button and it goes out to the reporters and make sure you're thinking about city hall reporters because they're going to be your main audience for those. Um, I would also see about if you can get a photo taken with your city councilors or with your coalition partners beforehand or right after, that can be super helpful for social media and getting, um, getting that out. And the, another thing to think about is op-eds or letters to the editor. Could you have uh, your city council champion do an op-ed about this? Um, and again, social media throughout, we had someone live tweeting the whole thing so that people could follow along who weren't able to be there. And finally, victory, hooray, you passed uh, your city council resolution. This is a picture of folks supporting both of our city council resolutions along with our mayor and two of the city council people. So uh, they did come out right afterwards and take a photo with some of us and that was exciting. So we were able to use that photo to uh, share it with our partners to celebrate, um, to announce that we won. And I, the things to think about at this point are some kind of celebration event. Should you go out for happy hour afterward? Do you have a coalition meeting coming up that you can celebrate this victory at and start thinking about next steps? Um, what are your next steps? Do you wanna take this to the state? Or is there a nearby city, uh, a university, some other entity that you wanna also try to pass these resolutions in? I would suggest you follow up with your local Congress people um, and make sure that they have seen this. Um, hopefully in your resolution, the city will share it with them, but it doesn't hurt for you to also share it with them and make sure that they understand that this has happened um, among their constituents. Thanks to all your city council members. Make sure you're thanking everyone who supported, following up with anyone who had concerns or if you didn't support and following up with um, any media, you, this would be a good time to try to pitch uh, an op-ed about why this is so important. So that's how it works here in Portland. Um, and Gudars uh, is gonna talk now about the uh, town halls that were complimentary to this. And if he has anything to add, I'd love to hear um, his thoughts on the city council as well. So thanks everyone. Great, thank you, Kelly. Can you uh, just stop? Yeah, thank you, perfect. So, um, right, I guess if, uh, if you have my screen, then uh, I'm ready to go. Um, as Kelly said, we uh, worked together uh, on uh, a town hall sessions. Basically, it was two town halls that we had last year uh, during the uh, spring and summer. Uh, first with Congressman Earl Blumenauer, uh, who is the representative of District 3 of Oregon, and then with uh, uh, Congresswoman Suzanne Boramici. Uh, she is basically the district one uh, representative and these two districts basically intersect from uh, the kind of center of the city of Portland 
And uh, so we had the constituents of each in different part of the city to meet with their uh, Congress member. Um, other uh, alliance with different experience also joined us in this uh, event, uh, including a physician with, uh, for social responsibility and uh, other groups. Uh, we have a local organization called the Portland Shiraz Sisterhood, Sisterhood uh, Community uh, that they are also uh, participated in both town halls. Um, about 100 people in each of these uh, town hall attended uh, and met with the uh, representative. Uh, our relation with Congressman Blumenauer actually goes back to around 2006. Uh, that was basically uh, the last years of uh, President Bush and with the uh, escalation of war in Iraq, uh, there was an opportunity that one of our uh, members of the organization who served in Iran as a Peace Corps volunteer in the 60s uh, approached me uh, at uh, the university and asked if we can organize uh, a, a group of concerned citizens about Iran. And obviously, uh, she was one of the volunteers and frontiers of this. And uh, we basically started this American Iranian Friendship Council organization and one of our first attempt was that basically meeting with uh, Congressman Blumenauer. Uh, Congressman Blumenauer was a kind of a co-council member with the Gretchen Kafuri, our Peace Corps volunteer friend, and she arranged for us to meet with uh, her. And uh, it, this relation basically continues uh, up until now. Uh, one of the uh, positive aspects of this relation is that Mr. Blumenauer once in a while contacts us and if something happens with the relation to Iran and basically in the past 10 years, he has been in connection with us uh, asking uh, for uh, comments when something comes up in the Congress. And uh, we also try to meet with him uh, so often, uh, for example, during the uh, JCPOA discussion uh, during President Obama. Uh, we met with him, uh, we met with all the representatives and senators uh, of uh, our area. And so these connections uh, helped uh, us. Um, recently, even in January, both uh, Congresswoman Bonamici and Congressman Blumenauer contacted me uh, early January, right after the assassination of uh, General Soleimani and uh, the escalation uh, between the Iran and the US and uh, offered uh, to meet with the community and give them uh, some sort of assurance that uh, the legislators will be uh, supporting the community. And uh, these are all, uh, I guess, good signs of having this kind of relation. Objectives for this town hall uh, was basically uh, to give awareness to Iranian community uh, that uh, what are the rights as a citizen, how they can influence the political process, uh, let them have a face-to-face -face meet and connection uh, with Congress members. And uh, it also provided uh, Congress members a channel to communicate with the community and to hear their stories and uh, offering basically the real life examples and experiences of the people whose relatives, fathers, mothers, brothers were not able to travel because of travel ban and et cetera, et cetera. And so all of these uh, objectives were basically uh, to humanize the image that's being created from, uh, for Iranians by mainstream media and how we can counter that discrimination and biases against Iranians. Um, the help that we got from the Congress people was that they could ask directly from the people who are being impacted by these uh, policies and try to uh, give them, uh, again, an assurance. Um, our ask was basically to see if there is any uh, tangible support that the Iranian community can give to the uh, Congress people and how they can support the community uh, and how they are planning to fight against sanctions, uh, uh, inclusion of Iran in travel ban, 
and all the discrimination policies that is happening day in, day out. Um, and also one of the main questions of people who attended these town hall was about the war authorization and how Congress can prevent uh, an attack on Iran. And I think in all of these uh, aspects, we were able to get answers and provide information to uh, the Congress people. The format uh, was uh, basically our target audience were Iranian Americans. Uh, if you are planning to do something like this and uh, you all want to have connection or you do not have connection with the Iranian community, uh, there are lists and connections that uh, one of the national organization, NIAC, NIAC, um, has the, um, and they have a meetups in different cities. Uh, when we were planning our uh, town hall, uh, we actually connected with NIAC and told them when and where it's going to be. And one of the surprises for our meeting was that from their connection, we found a, a person who uh, is a city council member in one of the suburban uh, areas of Portland who attended the meeting. And we didn't even know that there is an Iranian elected to a, a seat in the, that city council. The other uh, important group that are very interested and connected with us from, again, from 2006 uh, is the Iranian Peace Corps Volunteers Organization. Uh, we help them uh, organize or basically inaugurate their organization uh, with a conference uh, in 2011 in Portland. And so we have had this connection. Uh, ironically, there are a lot of uh, Peace Corps volunteers in our city, um, about 1,700 uh, or 1,800 Peace Corps volunteers served in Iran during the 60s up until 1976. And so they are um, basically residing in all cities and states. And uh, when they have their biennial conference, uh, these uh, are coming from different cities and uh, they, uh, they are a main par par participants in our activities for peace with Iran. Uh, we wanted to have a two-way conversation. Uh, so it wasn't just lecturing by a Congress member or um, whining from us. So this was a two-way conversation. Uh, we told our stories and they told us what they can do or what they cannot or gave us uh, basically um, assurance and also uh, some advice. Uh, the town hall was moderated and for uh, moderation, we asked one of the Iranian community leaders. Uh, she is one of the former directors of the city uh, department. And so she was very well respected by the community and by the uh, city officials. And she did the moderation for the uh, meeting. Uh, our schedule was basically twofold. One was, again, as I said, storytelling. We have recruited some um, a kind of variety of uh, Iranian members of the community uh, with a uh, uh, diverse uh, background, gender, profession, and also some non-Iranians. And so they would do their, uh, they narrate their stories. And then there was a question and answer. And at the end, Congress member would do the conclusion and uh, comment. Uh, the event, uh, as I said, started with a brief welcoming by moderator and then introduction of the Congress member. And after that, Congress member Blumenauer gave a uh, kind of a brief of what he's looking for. Then he went and sat in front of the hall and uh, note down or the comments or the, uh, the stories that people were uh, giving. We had about 15 people sign up to speak and among them the 14 were able to speak about three to four minutes each. And as I said, this was a very diverse group of people. And uh, then we went to, uh, after testimonial, we went to the uh, question and answer. Uh, we uh, basically decided to not have a, uh, a speaking uh, question, uh, we distributed a question card. Uh, the reason is that uh, some of you who are uh, intimately connected to the Iranian community should know that there is a fringe of Iranians uh, who are actually um, not supporting this uh, kind of activity and they may 
uh, try to interfere with the process. And so in order to not uh, giving up our time and space, uh, we decided to uh, have question cards distributed. And the moderator basically went through these questions, uh, combined them together uh, if need be. And then uh, he asked the question and Congressman would uh, respond. And uh, at the end, uh, we didn't want to basically disqualify anybody. So we uh, collected all the question cards uh, and asked people if they wanted to have response to put their name and address or phone number. Uh, so, uh, and then we gave all these cards to the staff uh, with the congressman and uh, they were able to respond to them if a question was not asked or was not included in the discussion at the end because we, there was a time limitation as well. Um, uh, the testimonials were basically uh, mostly uh, was about a concern of a, a possibility of a war. And so uh, we uh, tried to uh, provide a variety of different issues uh, from personal stories, personal uh, issues that people had to like academic uh, scholars who uh, presented their views on Islamophobia and other uh, issues that are related to our community uh, in, in large. Uh, then there were some Americans who had traveled to Iran, including uh, people who have traveled with code pink to Iran, and they were able to basically give their story from the travel. They spoke about their experience in Iran, how they were dealt with, with the uh, Iranian community, the government in Iran, um, including, uh, I believe they had a visit short visit with foreign minister Zarif, and also they were able to attend a session of the Iranian parliament, the Majlis, and uh, they spoke about these as well. Uh, the QA section was basically, as I said, uh, mostly uh, not uh, screened. Uh, even even the, uh, the storytellers, we did not know what they are going to talk and they were not uh, required to let us know what they are going to speak. So it was pretty free flow. And uh, the question answers even uh, more so, uh, including the questions that was asked uh, in, uh, in favor of an uh, interference in Iran. Um, one of the attendees asked the Iranian people are now tired of this regime and they want to change. And uh, Congressman Blumenauer basically uh, tried to answer that concern. At the end, uh, Congressman uh, wrapped up with basically the final thought that he had and uh, his suggestions about, uh, first of all, the running of Iranian uh, Americans uh, for office. Uh, this was basically, I guess, uh, included because of that individual that I just mentioned had run for the city uh, council member. And uh, in addition to that, uh, Mr. Blumenauer said that he is going to share this with uh, his uh, uh, friends in the Congress, with his colleagues, and try to uh, have them uh, set up a similar uh, town hall, especially in California, New York, Texas, and DC area where the, there is a congregation of Iranian in the community. And so I want to uh, finish with the message that I uh, mentioned uh, that uh, um, Congresswoman Bonamici and Congressman Blumenauer left in early uh, January for us. And uh, this is what they said. And you can basically feel uh, the positive uh, impact of these town halls. Hello, this is Congresswoman Suzanne Bonamici calling for Gudars. I'm sorry I missed you. Um, it is um, Thursday, and I just wanted to reach out and let you know I'm thinking about you. I really appreciated the uh, discussion that you hosted and put together last August, uh, and I'm thinking about everybody in the community and understand the stress you must be under. I, I know so many of you. In the community, have family um, in Iran, and I just want to want you to know. I'm urging the president to stop escalating the confrontation. We're about to vote on a resolution limiting the powers and reminding of the constitutional requirement that 
uh, Congress be involved. Um, so don't hesitate to reach out. We want to hear from you. Um, my organ number is 503-469-6010, and my Washington, D.C. number is 202-225-0855. Look forward to talking with you soon. Bye. Great. Hello, this is Congresswoman Suzanne Bonamici okay, calling for Blue Dollars. I'm sorry I missed you. Um, it is um, Thursday. No, it repeated that. Ah, got it. Thank you. Yeah. It's it's not playing anymore, Blue Dollars. You're good. Is that the end of your presentation? Uh, yeah. Uh, basically, it was the message from uh, uh, Congressman Blumenauer, too, but I don't think I... S mm. oh. I think only... Oh, Josh, right this is Earl Blumenauer calling. Sorry I missed reaching you in person. I wanted to discuss with you setting up a meeting with the Iranian community. I'm uh, obviously deeply troubled with... Uh, Trump's reckless actions. Uh, I want to make sure that we're able to uh, meet with and perhaps uh, uh, help reassure the uh, charge. This is Earl Blumenauer calling. Sorry I missed reaching you in person. I wanted to discuss with you setting up a meeting with the Iranian community. I'm uh, obviously deeply troubled with uh, Trump's reckless actions. Uh, I want to make sure that we're able to uh, meet with and perhaps uh, uh, help reassure uh, the community that we are with them 100 percent and we will fight to avoid crazy stuff. Um, if there's uh, a moment to chat this week, I'd like to uh, visit with you to get something uh, moving to be able to uh, help uh, set up a meeting, help reassure folks, be able to take other steps that you think might be uh, might be helpful. Uh, I'm open to uh, any and all suggestions. I hope things are well with you in the new year, as crazy as they are with the Trump administration. We have our work cut out for us. Uh, look forward to uh, visiting uh, when you have a moment. Thank you very much. Great. Awesome, thank you so much, Gudars. Um, did you wanna say anything else to conclude the presentation? No, 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 I'm done. Uh, so okay. we're ready for QA. Great, awesome. Okay, thank you so much. So um, just wanted to let people know that um, that concludes our presentation. So just want to say thank you again to Kelly and Gudars for um, giving us some insight about uh, what it looks like to actually pass a city council resolution and um, also to host a congressional town hall in your uh, local community. Um, so. Now I wanted to just uh, open the, the floor up for people who had any questions for um, either Kelly or Gudars or for me about how um, moving forward that what will, this will look like or anything, any questions you had about their presentations in particular. Um, so for people who are joining us, um, I'm gonna give you the option to go ahead and unmute yourself now. So if you have a question, just go ahead and unmute yourself and you can um, just say your name and um, I'll call on you to uh, start asking questions. <clears throat> You're also welcome to type questions in the chat box. Um, 
So Garth is saying, thanks. Need to look through the samples for question. Thanks again. So I think people are uh, were um, understandably impressed by the presentations. I think they were really comprehensive. Um, I guess, you know, while we wait for some folks to hop on and ask some questions, I would ask um, both of you, I'm wondering, um, you know, we went over these two strategies of, of passing city council resolutions and also um, hosting congressional town halls. I'm wondering if maybe each of you could give a sense of when it's useful to do each or, or why, why one would want to pass a city council resolution versus host a congressional town hall as a strategy. Like, what are some of the benefits to each of these as a strategy? Maybe Kelly could start if, if you're comfortable. Oh, you're muted. Should be in the bottom left hand corner to unmute yourself. While Kelly is unmuting herself, um, oh, it says the, oh, I'm sorry. I'll just, that's weird. I didn't mute you. Um, let me unmute you right now, Kelly. There. Okay, you should be, ah, sorry about that. I wasn't sure. So sorry. Problem. Um, I guess I would say, you know, it's worth thinking through both and. Um, I mean, that's kind of what we did, right? I think you got from Gudarza's presentation the fact that this really affected city council members so deeply. I mean, those town halls were in June and in August and that um, they were calling the community in January when things heated up. Um, and that even though these were people who were generally supportive, uh, they both really got so much out of that and I think are taking a deeper awareness into, into their work in Congress. And so I think it was strategic for the long haul to like build those relationships. Um, Suzanne Bonamici called me for the, like personally for the first time ever. I didn't reach out to her. She reached out to me in January as well and was calling other people who had been involved. So I think that it was a difference in the level of relationship that was built by doing those town halls that is going to be important going forward um, in, in terms of, you know, policy around Iran or, or other anti-war policies. So I think that's a, you know, it may look different in your community if your Congress people aren't as sympathetic as ours were to begin with. And that would be interesting to see what, you know, what, what does that kind of town hall look like? Um, but I think that was, that was really key. And then city council, um, again, it's, it's another way to kind of build up